I've never had any trouble coming up with new ideas. It's actually usually been the opposite. I have so many ideas that the problem I deal with is deciding which story I want to tell. Over the last few years, I've put together some questions that have helped make the process of deciding what project to work on a little easier for me. If you've ever dealt with the same problem, maybe they'll help you too. Question number one. If I could only tell one more story, is this the story that I would tell? It's kind of a dark note to start on but none of us know how long we'll be around for. That's why I'm always really careful to make sure that I'm working on projects that I know that I have to tell. Setting this really high bar where I know that if the story I'm telling right now and working on right now was my last story, I would be okay with that. It makes me strive to make that project as good as possible and to make sure it's an idea that I'm really in love with, really committed to, and really believe in. Question number two. Does the story matter? When I decided to drop out of college to pursue my writing and other projects, I thought of it as a really selfish decision. And so eventually, I made the decision that I wanted the stories that I work on to help other people in the same way that they helped me. There's nothing wrong with creating projects that are just meant to be entertaining. And that kind of entertainment and escapism can be really valuable to people in its own right. But I want my stories to be more impactful than that. I find that the stories I care about the most, that I put the most of myself into, are usually the stories that I feel will resonate the most with other people. So if I don't think this story is meaningful enough, impactful enough, honest enough emotionally, I ax it. Because ultimately, I only have a certain number of stories that I'm gonna be able to tell and bring to life. So I wanna make sure that each of those really, really counts. I don't wanna waste my time working on something less meaningful if I could instead spend that time working on something that could really mean a lot to somebody. And that's a big part of what usually makes it mean a lot and matter a lot to me. The third question is, will I see this project through? It's really hard to be honest with yourself about this one, but it's so important to do so. Some projects come together quickly and others really don't. I have projects I'm working on now that I've been working on since 2015. That's over three years and we're not anywhere close to the end. If your plan is to write a 1000 page novel, but you haven't even written a short story yet, do you really think you're gonna have the runway to see it through? Or are you maybe getting a little bit ahead of yourself? I don't know the answer to that. Everyone has to come up with their own conclusion. Usually a really good indication of whether this project matters to you is if the idea just keeps coming back. I know that some writers, they don't even write their ideas down because they feel that the good ideas, they stick. They're gonna come back and there's nothing they can do to keep them away. Personally, I track every idea that I have. Whether it's a good idea or a bad idea, I like to have it all together. Sometimes I scrap one project and I make it part of another project. Other times it's just useful to have there so I know the possible things that I can dive into. But most of all, when I'm looking through my files, if certain projects keep sticking out to me over and over again, I'll take that as a really good indication that this is a project that I'm really interested in and that it's worth developing a little bit to see if it's really worthwhile and making one of the main things I'm working on. Finally, question number four. Can I do this story justice? Usually when people ask themselves this question, they're wondering about it creatively. Oh, I'm not good enough or experienced enough to tell the story the way I want to. I never indulge that kind of thought. If the project feels like it's too much for me creatively and I don't think I'm good enough of a writer, I try to rise to the occasion and get to the level that I want this project to be at. I wanna be putting my best foot forward creatively and craft-wise with every single project that I tackle. The way that I do think about this question is by wondering if I can actually bring to life what I think this project needs to be successful. Let's say I wanted to make a feature film. Well, if the feature film I wanted to make required special effects and a big crew, I probably don't have the money to make that. I have to make something that's within my means. So this might require me to set aside certain ideas that are a little too big for what I wanna do. Of course, if the project really matters to me and my answer to the three previous questions were all yes, then I would probably consider the project still and try to see if there's some way to actually make this project a reality. Maybe I reduce the scope a little or maybe I use a tool like Kickstarter so that I can actually realize the vision that I have in mind. It's not an easy question and a lot of times it's frustrating. You can't always make that 50 issue comic book series that you wanna do because you just financially can't bankroll that and publishers don't believe in you enough to allow you to create a long series like that because you're just not proven yet and you don't have the audience built up. 
finding that middle ground, the Venn diagram sweet spot between projects that you can realistically create and stories that you really want to bring to life. I think that sweet spot is where you can find really fulfilling work. Those are the four questions I try to ask myself with every project. Usually if my answers are yes to the first two questions, I find a way to make the next two work. And I know that I'll have the passion and the drive to realize the project and to stick through it regardless of how long they take. That's how I choose my projects. That's the process that the projects I'm working on now went through. And I'm really looking forward to sharing them with you so you can see the result of this process I've just talked about. And hopefully these questions can also help you figure out the projects that you want to bring to life. But there is one more question that I want to talk about. It's not a question that I use, but it's a question a lot of people ask themselves, which I try to avoid at all costs. A lot of people ask themselves, question number five, is this story marketable? Is the project I'm working on a saleable idea? I think that's entirely the wrong way to think about it. If you're creating a project from the point of view of trying to anticipate what the market wants rather than what's right for you, you're much less likely to actually stick through and finish the project when things get tough. You're not gonna have the drive and motivation to spend the months or years to actually create the thing that you're trying to make. But most of the time people say, well, I have to work on something that's marketable. Otherwise, the project's not gonna be financially viable. But that's not correct. You don't learn about business and marketing to determine whether your ideas are viable. You learn about business and marketing to make your ideas viable. Those skills, those ancillary skills, they're the foundation that allows you to create the projects that you want to create. They're not meant to prohibit you from realizing your dream projects. They're meant to enable you to find creative ways to reach that. So ignore the genre considerations of, well, science fiction isn't really cool right now or rom-coms aren't really cool right now. All you need is your passion and your drive to actually learn the business, learn the industry, get really, really good at your craft and have the drive to finish it, see it through and get your work to an audience. It's not an easy process to go through, but it does get easier over time. You're gonna get more in tune with yourself, with your own voice and your creative ambitions as you continue to bring projects through this process. And you'll be able to tell really quickly if a project is right for you or isn't right. So when you're deciding the projects you wanna work on, leave that to the creative part of yourself. Make sure they're stories that really, really matter to you. All right, that's it for this video. This is episode two of the storyline series I'm doing. Thanks for watching and hope you keep following along.